Hello everyone, my name is Caitlin. Welcome back to my channel. So this video has probably been like my most requested video I've ever gotten and that's because there was a lot of controversy I think around this live action remake and I'm kind of a big believer of not judging something until I've actually watched it and so that's why I've kind of kept quiet on my opinions until now. And so I'm really excited to do this review for you guys so I figured I would do a non-spoiler section first in case you haven't seen the movie yet and then we'll do a full spoiler and I'll talk all about the plot and everything I felt about the movie. Okay, so with all that being said, let's just jump right into it. So Jen Generally speaking, I did really enjoy the movie. I thought it was a lot of fun. I didn't go in with too high expectations. Like I knew it was a DCOM, so I knew what to expect from it. And I feel like that kind of helped with my enjoyment out of the movie, if that makes sense. I feel like the beginning part of the film is like really well done and really grabs your attention. And that was probably my favorite part about the film overall. Like I think it starts off very strong. Once the plot does kick in, it's very similar to another Kim Possible plot that they kind of already did, which I'll talk more about in the spoiler section. But in a way that kind of helped because it made it more feel like Kim Possible. But then in another way it didn't because then it made it feel like not as good of a version of the plot they've already done before. I also wasn't too big of a fan of the message of the movie, which I'm still not too sure what that is. If it is the message that I think it is. We'll talk more about that in the spoiler section because I don't want to spoil anything, but I feel like the message is a bit weird. But yeah, I don't want to spoil anything, so I'll just say that. But there was a good amount of like Easter eggs and references to the original film, which is probably my favorite part about this movie. And I feel like this movie got a lot of criticism going in, which is understandable because the previews really did not do it justice. Like that bus scene is probably the worst scene in this film. I do not know why they chose that one to be the one that they released beforehand, but overall I do think it was a pretty enjoyable film. Like I really liked it. And I think if you go in without your expectations too high, like. If you go in knowing what to expect from a DCOM, I think you will enjoy it as well. Like obviously the animation isn't gonna be great because they don't have the highest of a budget. And yeah, the plot line was enjoyable and I, I thought it was a fun time. Also, like I said, I just don't like judging something before I've actually seen it. And so if you have been somebody that's like, this movie's gonna suck, like at least like sit down and watch it before you decide that it sucks, you know what I mean? Anyways, with all that being said, let's move on to the spoiler section. So I really wasn't happy with the addition of Athena in the first place. Like when they first announced that they were gonna add someone new to Team Possible or whatever you wanna call it, I just didn't really like the idea of that because I wasn't sure how that was going to affect the dynamic between Ron and Kim. Like the reason why I like Monique so much is because she kind of serves as another friend to Kim that's separate from the whole mission stuff. Whereas Athena is introduced and then right away is brought into the mission world, which is like, I don't know. I just wasn't too happy with that. And then I was disappointed because I felt like adding in Athena took attention away from Kim and Ron's relationship, which is something I was really looking forward to seeing in like this live action setting. And then you have her reveal, which, uh, so at the beginning of the movie, like during that poppy blue scene, I actually joked with Nina and I was like, she's going to be a syntho droid because she's acting really weird and then Kim's acting really weird too. And so I was like, she's a syntho droid, like as a joke, because they've already done that plot line. They're not going to do it again, right? Uh, apparently not because that's what they, exactly what they decided to do, which was so weird to me because I'm like, I guess it does make sense because it made it feel like a Kim Possible story, but the only reason why it felt like a Kim Possible story because it was one. It was one that was already done. It just made me so frustrated because I'm like, you already did this and I think you did it better the last time you did it because a boyfriend was something that Kim had been talking about and Draken's like, ooh, I figured out what she wants. She wants a boyfriend. And I just, I don't know. There's just something so much more heartbreaking about it being a boyfriend in my opinion. Like that betrayal of somebody you liked in that sort of way and like having feelings for someone and then them turning on you like that. Whereas in this case, it just kind of felt like this friend that she had that she only really knew for a couple of days, which I felt to be so weird because Kim at the end was like, I knew there was good in you, which I find such a weird thing to say because we really didn't get to see them bonding for that long. And then it's also like, she's a robot. So like, what good can there be in her? I guess maybe Kim's spark is good, but like that doesn't really make sense to me because I'm like, she was a robot programmed to steal your spark. So like, what good is in her? Like when she died, I was not sad at all. I was kind of chill with her dying. Like she's a robot, okay, she can die. Like, why are we so attached to this robot that's been evil this whole time? I'm so confused. I guess I just have a hard time sympathizing with like a robot. Even though she does look like a teenage girl, I'm like, but you're a robot. I feel weird about this. This is the message I was talking about earlier. I was like, so confused by and then i also wasn't sure if the message was like there's gonna be people that are better than you because there wasn't it's a robot there's nobody better than kim so like the whole lesson that she learned makes no sense because there's no one better than her it's just a robot and then it's like so if that's not the lesson then is the lesson that robots can be good too robots can be people we should treat robots like people i don't want to treat robots like people that's weird i don't know it's confusing. But let's move on because I did really want to talk about Kim because I felt like this Kim was so different from animated Kim. And that's nothing against like Sadie Stanley. I thought that she was cute, adorable. She was actually like 
a pretty decent actress for this being her first film ever and so I thought that that was really neat. It was just the fact that like this Kim was just so different. Like I'm gonna be honest, animated Kim kind of bugs me at times. Like I find her to be a bit self-centered, she's incredibly sassy and a bit rude at times and kind of selfish. So <laughs> that was something that bugged me about Kim but I also felt like that's what made Kim such a realistic and like well-rounded teenage character was I felt like this Kim was kind of almost too nice or too perfect in a way whereas I felt like that really wasn't what animated Kim was about. I also feel like animated Kim was just so much more teenagery than this Kim which I feel like is hard to explain but like there's this one example of Kim like fighting and she calls Monique and they just start like gossiping about the spring formal or whatever the dance was and I just could never see live action Kim doing that like she just seems way too serious in a way or I don't know just not like a teenager she seems like I don't know it's hard to describe what it is but she just doesn't seem like as teenager or as like concerned about teenager stuff or maybe that was just me reading too much into things I don't know I also found that the lack of cheerleading in this film was really disappointing like cheerleading for animated Kim was such a big part of her character and for them to basically like throw it out in this movie made me so sad especially because like that's something that explained why Kim was so good at what she did. I also don't know why Kim had to do so many unnecessary flips in this film. Like when she goes to like pick up her homework and does a cartwheel or like jumps out of her bedroom window and like does a flip around. I'm like, why is there so many flips? Like Kim was not like flipping around in the cartoon that much, I feel like. And I understand that they are different types of mediums and so I can respect that they are gonna have their differences. I basically feel like animated Kim was a lot cooler than this Kim. I don't know what it was. I guess they just kind of softened up this Kim, which like kind of took away some of her spark. <laughs> That's funny. Let's move on to Ron because he was very different in this film and we hardly even saw him which made me sad. I felt like in the show they always treated Ron as an equal to Kim. Like I feel like they focused on them evenly whereas in this movie I really felt like they made Kim the main character and Ron was kind of a side character which I feel like wasn't the case in the show which made me sad. Like we didn't really get any scenes of Ron just on his own or even just like Ron and Rufus doing something or just Ron and Kim doing something besides like a couple small scenes. Actually my favorite scene in the whole movie was probably the scene where they're trapped together in the electric eel tank. I feel like that one really showcased what the show was about. Like something I was concerned about going into the movie was if they'd actually have something be like as scary as like it was in the cartoon and like how that would act in live action and so I felt like that scene was like the best in the whole movie. That was my favorite scene. I also wish that they did have Rufus from the beginning like they do in the show. I understand that him getting him from Draken kind of explains why Rufus is more smarter than a normal mole rat but it's also like I don't think he needed to explain that and I also really like Smarty Mart and so the fact that like we didn't need to have Smarty Mart in this movie makes me sad because Smarty Mart was the best. But yeah, overall I did like Sean as Ron. I thought he did a good job, but he's just a very different Ron, similar to Kim. Like he's definitely not as loud as Will is as Ron. Like Ron in the show is yelling like a lot. He yells a lot. Whereas this Ron just seemed a lot quieter, which was a different take on him. Maybe it's just because we didn't get to see enough of him. Like I said, I don't even think we got any scenes with Ron just on his own, like doing something, which is something we got on the show a lot. Like we constantly have Ron like doing something funny with Rufus or I don't know. He did say booyah a lot but I did miss his line where he'd go like that'd be so cool if it wasn't gonna hurt us. He didn't say that once in this movie and Dragon's line where he'd always be like you think you're all that but you're not or like whatever he would change it up but he didn't say that once. I did think that the villains did a pretty good job in this movie. Like she goes good no complaints there and like yeah basically the villains were great. I just felt like they did treat Draken like he was very incompetent whereas I felt like in the show he wasn't nearly as incompetent. Like yeah he was like maybe not the best villain, but <laughs> he had the brains to like come up with some good stuff. Whereas this time I felt like they kind of just made it seem like Shigo was the brains behind everything, whereas Shigo was kind of more of the fighter and Draken like came up with the stuff. At least that's how it was in So the Drama. And so, I don't know, I felt like they made him too incompetent and it made me sad because he's not that incompetent. Also, this could just be me really nitpicking, but I felt like something about Draken was that he always wanted to take over the world. Whereas in this movie, they really made it seem like his goal is just to take down Kim, which really wasn't his goal in the show. Like in the show, it was always, I'm gonna take over the world and this is my plan to do it. And if Kim comes, this is my other plan to get rid of her. Like his focus was never to get rid of Kim. His focus was always to take over the world and like Kim was put second if she like comes and tries to interfere. And so, I don't know, they just made him too Kim obsessed in my opinion, which I, yeah, I'm just nitpicking at this point, but it was just little things like that that just bugged me. They also set this movie up for a sequel, which I'm like not too happy about. Like, I understand that they want to revive Kim Possible or whatever, but I just felt like this Kim Possible is nowhere near as good as the original Kim Possible. 
And like I really liked the idea of this movie existing as a standalone movie. Like as good as it was, I just don't want this to be a thing. Like I'd rather we just like be like, cool, that was fun. But remember the show that was so much better? I don't know, at least they did set it up in a way that it would make sense for them to get a sequel. Like they have something else to go off of. Like it didn't end perfectly, unlike other movies like zombies that completely wrapped up perfectly and the conflict is literally resolved perfectly and now it's getting a sequel but that's a story for another day anyways guys i don't know what you thought it came possible so don't forget to leave that in the comments down below i feel like i made it sound like i didn't like the movie that much but i did like i said i enjoyed it i had a fun time like i don't know i guess i'm just not gonna go off about all the things i liked about it because that's not an interesting review I don't know. Let me know down below what you guys thought about the movie. I can't wait to read all about it. Anyways, guys, my name is Caitlin. You can follow me everywhere at Caitlin's Disney. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that bell so you'll be notified every time I post a new video. But that's all I have to say for today. Hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you very, very soon. Do you think Caitlin's gonna... <laughs> Welcome to Behind the Scenes. This is the Behind the Scenes. Behind the Scenes is... What's that? What are you saying? You're saying something you're like, stopping. Oh, me being like, so what I liked about Kim Possible. So what I liked about Kim Possible. <laughs> so, Kim Possible. <laughs> <laughs> what I liked about it. <laughs> it's so weird to film here. It was entertaining. I was entertaining through that whole process. Were you? I'm so excited to watch this video again. <laughs> really? <laughs> are you being sarcastic? What? Are you being sarcastic? I really want to know your opinion. You already heard it. <laughs> And that's the tea, sis. <laughs>